George Washington died on December the 14th, 1799. Under the terms of Washington's will, his 123 slaves, not including the 40 who were rented or the 154 slaves belonging to Martha Washington, were to be freed upon the death of his wife. The terms of George Washington's will created an almost immediate problem for Martha Washington. The only thing standing between 123 slaves and their freedom was her life. According to a contemporary letter, Martha Washington did not feel as though her life was safe in their hands. The first conviction in Virginia of slaves for the use of poison against their master occurred in 1732 after the death of Ambrose Madison the grandfather of future U.S. President James Madison. In the early summer, 36-year-old Ambrose fell sick. Poisoning was suspected. The poison did not kill him outright, but caused enough internal damage that he lingered near death for weeks, finally dying in late August in great agony. Within a week of Madison's death, three slaves were being held under suspicion of having poisoned the young planter. Two of the three were found complicit in Madison's death, but not to such a degree as to be punished by death. The third, a man called Pompey, the principal conspirator, was executed. Martha Washington's fears of a plot to kill her may have been justified or may have been imaginary, but they certainly reflected the attitudes of slave owners of her day. The closeness of house servants to their masters, for whom they cooked and washed in the very house where the master slept, made the threat of poisoning terrifying. Nor was this fear groundless. The records of colonial Virginia document the trial of 180 slaves tried for poisoning. Martha chose the path of caution and freed Washington's slaves within a year after his death. She never freed her own slaves.